So the thing on foreclosures is this. Okay, you live in a house. All of a sudden you can't pay for the house. There's a couple different things that happen. This typically happens in the first 60 days. So in the first 60 days, you become what's called delinquent. Once you become delinquent, it becomes public record. So when the public record goes out that you're behind on your mortgage, that's when entities like Zillow pick it up. And then they, they lump these things together in what's called a pre-foreclosure. A pre-foreclosure is not a real thing. There's no such thing as a pre-foreclosure. All Zillow is advertising is someone who's behind on their mortgages. That's it. It's not a real thing. They're not in foreclosure. They're not going in foreclosure. They're just 60 days plus behind on their mortgage. So as a real estate agent, you could look at that as a potential opportunity to maybe you're doing a cash call on, a, on, on them and say, uh, what the heck was that? Um, hey, um, I have a set of investors who's looking to purchase a property in this neighborhood. Do you know of anyone who might be thinking about selling? Knowing that they've essentially pre-foreclosed, meaning they're, they're behind on their thing, they might be somebody who'd be entertaining a cash offer. So from the wholesale side of the business, and that could be a whole different discussion for another day, that's a great opportunity to make that phone call. From there, uh, you can catch up on your mortgage, that's no problem. Uh, but what also opens up the door when you do that is the things like making uh, offers to them from the investment side. And that's, again, another conversation we have about subject to purchases or lease option purchases where you can bring them up to date to not ruin their credit and take over their property. It's a great way to make a ton of money. So we could have that conversation one week, too, about you know, different investment strategies around that. So after that happens, then you fork say you get further down the road. It typically takes at least 24 months to foreclose on a property where the bank decides, hey, you enough is enough, you're not making your payment, I'm gonna file for what's called foreclosures. In the state of Ohio, it's very difficult for that to happen. You're talking a 12 plus month process. In Georgia, that, that could happen in 30 days. I can go to a property and I can say, I'm gonna foreclose, I can get that title back in 30 days to the property. In Ohio, it's a 12 month to 24 month project and you could stop it any time by going into bankruptcy. So many times you see this happening, like it's three, four, five, six years down the road because you file bankruptcy and it gets put over here. And then once you're in that process, there's a stay to that foreclosure, so that doesn't happen. Once the home goes officially into foreclosure, it then goes to the sheriff's sale. The sheriff's sale assigns a value to the property and that value is assigned at 75% or two thirds the value of the property, of the assessed value, not the market value, the assessed value. And that's where it shows up on the sheriff's site. So if you can go to Summit County Sheriff's Sale, you can pull up a list of everything that's subject to going to the sheriff's sale every week. And it happens on the courthouse steps, like literally inside on the courthouse steps. So the guy stands up there with a piece of paper and he auctions off properties. <clears throat> After that process, so that's, the people that show up to these are your first lien holders. So you have an equity line on it, you have a mechanics lien on it, the HOA you haven't been paying, put a lien on it. All those get discharged, and the only one that gets paid off is your real estate taxes and the first lien holder. So what happens is, it starts bidding off at two thirds of value. Typically these homes are underwater or they would have sold the property already. However, if there's a massive equity, equity, second equity line, there's another opportunity to make money, that person's left holding the bag. So if you do a little bit of research, you can do this under Realist, where you find out their first mortgage, and then you see a second one recorded for a lesser amount, that's usually an equity line or a second mortgage, and that's usually the one they got hit on. So there's an opportunity there to go to that share sale and pick up that house for something less than market value and make some money on that. You just gotta look at those things. So what happens is the first lien holder is always there. They send an attorney there, the attorney represents a majority of the banks. So the property can be worth $300,000 market value, the assessed value is say 275, so starting bid something like, I don't know, 210. So all of a sudden you walk in the door and all of a sudden somebody goes, all right, we're gonna open up the bid at 210, first bidder is 295. That's just the first lien holder bidding exactly what's owed on that mortgage. So they're gonna take over the property for whatever's owed on that first lien, they're gonna take down back their property. If you're a good bank, typically what's gonna happen is you're gonna take them in house, you typically will package them together with a bunch of different regional assets and you package them together in what's called a pool, a pool of assets. So it's a bunch of different homes and typically a region and they'll sell them off to hedge funds and management companies and HUD and Wells Fargo and all these different people who buy pools of assets and they typically do it at a deep discount to get them off their books. So we took these pools, we sold it to this people and then these people will then hire a management company. The management company will go out there, slap a bunch of stickers on the house, they'll mow the lawn, they'll clean up the house to make it look nice. And then they'll hire a local REO agent who's already been vetted by them. They usually have three in the area. And if someone wants to get into REO, it's a big pain in the butt. You gotta have a large checkbook because you have to fund all their costs. It's a pain in the butt. 
That's a good way to get a bunch of listings. Then they'll list the property just like every other home. It'll just say bank owned. And a lot of times you don't even say bank owned. You could put principal, you could put whatever. So a lot of times you won't even know unless you check the tax and legal that it is a foreclosure and it'll show up like any other property. And that's really the whole thing behind foreclosures. They're not this great deal. You have to really know what you're doing. There are sites like auction.com that are totally awesome. Again, but those properties are sight unseen. So if you go to sheriff sale, you have to have cash in hand, $10,000 down, day of, rest of the payment, 30 days. You're not getting a loan for this house because you're not getting inside. So you can't get an appraisal done. You can't get an inspection. You're never seeing the house. So you better have been in that house before, know something about the house, or indiscriminately broken into that house if you're going to buy it. So that's... That's it. I mean, that's that's everything on foreclosures. What other, is there any other questions about the process? No. Now there's 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 fifty other.